We follow students in Birmingham and Manchester. Let me know if I'm hurting you. Juggling academic study. Nothing's going in. With home life. Ah! And work on the wards. You're never going to learn how to be a nurse until you're out there doing the nursing job. This time, passion. I'm just dead enthusiastic about it. I <laughs> too enthusiastic sometimes, I think. Tough choices. I don't really want to lose the house that I've literally worked the last 30 years for. And close shaves. No, we're not going to give two doses because then we'll be overdosing. Oh, uh, well, no. As our nurses to be step up to the challenge of 21st century nursing. You always love a good cup of tea. If you're poorly, you know, or if you had a shock, give them a cup of tea with 80 sugars, you'll be fine. First year Kelly is on a two week placement at Salford Royal's dermatology ward. After two months of study, this is her first time with real patients. Hi, would you like some tea? Go on, be a devil. Nursing psoriasis to cysts, it's a baptism of fire for Kelly. That can be very, very squeamish. I have tried to watch surgical programmes and I, I don't get past the knife going on the skin because it's the thought of peeling back the skin as well. Oh no. <laughs> her next patient threatens to test her nerve. Oh, it looks so sore. You all right swinging your feet up there? Let me to give you a hand. He's been admitted with red spots all over his body. The cause is unknown, so they need a sample for the lab. Kelly has been asked to assist with the procedure. I don't know, I'm just a bit dubious because I've never done it before. Might go a bit. Just going up there, Whoa. up in the world there. <laughs> Kelly's put to task, preparing the local anesthetic. Yep, so it's, yeah, just put your finger yep. on this blue dot here. Yeah, and it's um, Right, perfect. Yep. Lay on top. Dr. Nicole will be performing the biopsy. It's the smell as well I'm worried about. I reckon there's going to, I don't know whether there'll be a smell, I don't know. I reckon if there's some blood or something, I don't know whether, I don't know. I don't know, just wait and see. How does that feel? Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Right. She pulled this piece out and it was still attached a little bit and she had to cut it and I could hear it. You know when you cut through it, that, that, skin tingling sound that you can just, oh, that, that made me go a little bit, but I don't want the patient to see my face because then that's not very fair because then he's going to be worried and so on and so forth. So, yeah, just try to go. Okay. To her, she's done millions. It's just another thing to her, probably. But to me, that was like, oh, my God. It's like a surgical procedure sort of thing. And fascinated, I thought, this is brilliant. And now I want to see more. All done. That easy. <laughs> thanks very much. No, for thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have you yeah. got any questions? No. no, it was really, really good. Thank you for okay. showing us that. It was fascinating. I thought really enjoyed that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks thank for you. being thanks patient with us. Help. Thanks. Yeah. Have yeah. You got any I think Kelly's done really well because I think for a nursing level it's quite a complicated and challenging one for them because if they're not trained to assist in theatre, they're not familiar with all the instruments that we use. So it can be very challenging for a nursing student. With regards to some of my fears, I do feel like we're passing them. Couldn't do anything like I'm a celebrity, get me out of here though. <laughs> so don't ask. <laughs> Where does milk come from? Shopping. From <laughs> the shopping? <laughs> okay. <laughs> For second year children's nurse TK, becoming a dad was a real turning point. Let's push. I learned a lot about responsibility, and in some ways, I learned a lot about children in general. And hey, I've got the one. Lovely. So, after being a father, the next biggest thing for me is being a nurse. When TK is not looking after his children or revising for his next exam, he's on placement at Birmingham Children's Hospital's Liver Ward. Right then. Come on, don't you get them all out? Prepping medication is a vital role of nursing, especially for children. Today, staff nurse Esther is giving TK the responsibility. 
I don't want to like scare them, but it's all about learning and growing. And if he doesn't know something, then I then I tell him. You last had it in the morning, so yes. So he didn't have it in the morning, did he? Oh, because it was no one way. Ah. Do you, should I draw it up in a bigger syringe or should I draw two? No, we're two not going to give two doses because ah. then we'll be overdosing. Ah, yeah. oh, oh no, Wait, that's well. what I sort of I, I sort of got confused on that. No, no, we're just going to skip this dose altogether because okay. it was no one way. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, some... mathematics and medical language can be tough for the uninitiated. So next is colicalcifer. Colicalciferol. Yeah, colicalciferol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The medical language sometimes can be really confusing. When you read it, you think it has to be something complicated, but it isn't. So hopefully, by the time I'm third year or qualified, I'd then be able to intuitively work out what exactly it's saying. Until then, it's easy to make mistakes. Right, TK, I'm going to show you something. Sure. You missed the medicine out on the drug chart. Sure. So we're pampersing. It's all right, it's just sometimes. Yeah. Obviously, these ones are like little booklets, like little yeah. magazines. And there's just so many charts and stuff that you can just think, oh, you're supposed to go here. Yes. But obviously, this part of the chart is important as well. Oh. Esther does keep me on my toes. When you're learning, you get things right. Sometimes you get things wrong. And if you feel safe in the person that's teaching you, you will know that it's only expected that you get some things wrong. But what they can do is set you right. In seven weeks, TK has clocked up more than 250 hours caring for children with liver conditions. Great. Oh, look at those muscles. Oh, my gosh. Today, he's looking after four-year-old Jacob, whose rare condition of insulin-resistant diabetes is causing him to lose weight. It can be quite hard, um, and especially with myself, being a second-year student, I might not have the full capacity to know exactly what, what child might do when they're in pain. You do think, is there anything I can say or do to calm him down? A human side of you kicks in where you just want to console them, you just want to touch their cheeks, you just want to tickle them, you just want a, a bit of play. Very well done. There we go. All done. Can you take it off for me now? Thank you. Jacob needs an exploratory operation to see what effect his condition is having on his insides. Taking a young child to theatre is hard for patient, parent, and apprentice. It's so touching. I felt myself going well, up just because it's quite an important time for, for the parents as well as, as the child. I'd imagine it'd be quite frightening just knowing you haven't got control or supervision of your own child. It's, it's a scary thought. The procedure requires Jacob to be anaesthetised. I'm, I'm concerned. I can only imagine what a parent feels like. At any point in time, this could be the path um, I might have to sort of experience with my two boys. From the very start of their training, students choose their field of nursing. For second year Diane, it's mental health. Mental illness can happen to anybody at any point in your life. Just because you've not had it previously doesn't mean to say you're not going to get it in the future. 48-year-old grandmother Diane began her working life as a hairdresser. She's now swapped scissors for psychology. I come from a background where the attitude was people like us don't go to university. I've sort of raised my children and this time now is my time. Diane is on an eight-week placement at Longbridge Health and Community Centre in Birmingham. This is the first time she's worked with patients outside a hospital setting. From crisis calls to care plans, Diane's progress is assessed by her mentor, Christine. What I'll be looking for is for her to take more of an active role in patient care. Hi, Andrew. Hiya. How are you? Bad, thank you. Butterflies, but fine. Today, Diane is leading a meeting with Angie, who has a long history of mental ill health. Her job is to come up with a care plan to help Angie live more independently. You can't you. undervalue groundwork practice, really. So every situation to her in the community is a new situation. Would you like to start, Diane? Thank you. Hi, Angie. Can I ask what your understanding of your diagnosis is? All I know is I'm, I'm paranoid schizophrenia. I've had voices before. I've heard voices before and um, hallucinations. Since I've been on my, new, me, my medication, I've found that it's helped me a lot. 
as a student nurse, I think it, it's quite daunting, if I'm completely honest. When you're talking to somebody and I think you're trying to tease apart and ask the right questions, um, you could make a remark that's quite innocent, but it could trigger um, a response in somebody that you weren't expecting. So you've got to sort of, in a sense, you're alert the whole time you're talking to somebody. Can I ask you what makes things worse? I don't like being shouted at or people raising their voices because it makes me worse. This isn't textbook. It isn't, uh, you know, theory. We're dealing with an actual person here that can be unpredictable from week to day. So for, for Diane to see that, you know, direct and see that nursing care and how we would engage with that individual, I think that would be very valuable to her. Do you feel able to get a bus on your own at the moment from where you live? No, because I haven't got a clue where I am. OK. So do you need support with that? Yeah, for a bit. I found um, the care planning with Angie today, I found it fantastic. Um, I think with, with, that's one of the things I love about nursing, you're learning all the time. Um, I'll see you in two weeks' time. Okay, okay. that's lovely, thank you. Thank you. I'm halfway through my second year and there is still loads that I do not know. Um, and I think that's the scary, to be honest, that's the scary bit. <laughs> Right, so um, do you think there's anything that I could have actually done differently, better, in that process? No, you'll be after my job next. <laughs> <laughs> New girl Kelly is finding her feet on Salford Royal's dermatology ward. It's all or nothing, and I'm driven to be all. And I'm, I've told myself that nothing's going to phase me, and I'll be fine. So I'll be fine. We've got our gloves on, we've got our opens on. I'm ready to go. Kelly's mentor, staff nurse Lucy, is setting her a new challenge. Morning, Asha. Morning. So you're going to record his heart rate and his saturation levels. Yep. Her patient, Asha, has psoriasis. Kelly has to find his pulse and count the beats. I've never done it before, so it was quite nerve-wracking because I was, I think I was counting extra beats in my head. I don't know whether I was hearing things. 90. OK, so that's yeah. well done. Yeah. Yeah, did you find it OK? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could hear it beating. Yeah, yeah. I'll just check that you've done it. <clears throat> Everything a student does is scrutinised. You watched how to do the skills by your mentor. It is a bit frightening if you do make a mistake. OK. That's perfect. OK, you've done well there. Well yeah. done. No, okay, thank you good. very much. I feel like I've learnt so much. It's a lot to take in. It's very tiring, but I'm just dead enthusiastic about it. I'm a bit too enthusiastic sometimes, I think. Before nursing, 29-year-old Kelly spent most of her adult life in dead-end jobs. The turning point came when her granddad was being nursed through terminal cancer two years ago. He was treated so kindly and looked after, um, and you couldn't fault the nurses, and that's how I want to be. I admired them so much, and that's how I want to be. And he said to me once, when are you going to make something of your life? Well, I feel like I have now. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I wanted to do it. Since her granddad's death, Kelly has been determined to choose the right path. I think that I can give something back. I look at it as a bit like a yellow brick road. Um, and there's going to be some scarecrows on the way, and a lion and a, a tin man. But I'm on my way to a like a big green hospital. <laughs> For mature students coming to nursing later in life, there's added financial pressure. I struggle at the moment. Unfortunately, I'm three months behind with the mortgage. Second year mental health trainee Diane is used to a full-time pay packet. There have been times when I've considered giving up purely because of the financial aspect. I don't really want to lose the house that I've literally worked the last 30 years for. But if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? I struggle. I have to be honest, this is the bit that I struggle with. Diane's mentor, Chris, has asked her to administer the psychiatric medication their patients depend on. It's her first time injecting real patients. It's not all sitting down in rooms and doing therapy, you know, this, this is the nitty-gritty, this, this is, you know, administering medication and, and 
there's some horrific side effects from some of this medication and we really do have to monitor that. We had sessions on giving injections at um, university, but obviously when you come to give them in reality, you are doing it to a, an actual human being and there is a potential to cause pain. There's a thing where you press, but I always I can never do it with, with just my hands. I'll get the well done. <laughs> she smashes it everywhere. Diane's inexperience is starting to show. Oh, 0.5, but I thought it was 20. She's on 50. That's hundreds, aren't they? Oh, yes, yes, sorry, 100. Yeah, 0.5. There's such a, a, a tension and anxiety in your stomach. If I can't overcome that, I'm not going to be very good as a nurse, am I? 0.5. Yeah, yeah. Want to put a little bit of weight on your left side? Yeah, relax you a little bit. Yeah. There. Yeah. Short, sharp scratch. With Chris's help, Diane gives her very first injection. As much as you practice at university on oranges, the feel is different. I expected there to be some tension, and there's not. So it's literally like sticking a knife in melted butter. There we go. Okay. Clinically, it was OK, and yeah. the medication was administered. Yeah, yeah. And as I say, as you go on, I mean, if you're doing 20, by the time you've done five or six, you're flying through them, really. Yeah. In NHS clinics, the patients come thick and fast. That's it, the injection. 1.5, yeah. 1.5, yeah. 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 Oh, hold on. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Short, sharp. Scratch. Obviously, as a nurse, I know I've got to give injections, but I'm desperate. I don't want to hurt somebody. There are going to be times in my career when I do cause people pain, but if I can minimise that in any way, shape or form, then obviously the better. But OK. Yeah, that's great. That was better. I felt better with that one. But it is it's just, it is just a matter of getting into your own routine, isn't it? your own rhythm. 0.5. Short, sharp scratch. Short, sharp scratch. Short, sharp brick. Lovely and gentle. Thank you. It does feel fantastic <laughs> when somebody says that was nice and gentle. <laughs> I think it's intense for most people, but somebody like Diane that's never done it before. She was very nervous, and, but, but didn't show it. And as we've always said, it's important if you're worried or upset or, or, or showing any fear, really, the patient's going to feed off that and it's going to affect them as well. So it, it's great that she managed to sort of hold it together. And the practice was, was impeccable, to be honest. I'm shaking now. <laughs> but as you mentioned what keeps me going, I think, is the fact that I am desperate to be a mental health nurse. If I end up having to sell my house, and then so be it at the end of the day, that might seem a bit drastic, but this is what I want to do. I don't, I, I can honestly say that I can't see myself doing anything else now. Now I've started it, this is what I want to do. At Birmingham Children's Hospital, father of two, TK, is also at the sharp end. Oh. Is this one yours? That is my card. That is amazing. Twice you've done that now. <laughs> I can't believe it. You know, a bit later on, if, if I'm not so busy, can I take your book and try and learn one trick and I'll come and try it on you? No. No? Okay, then thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Eight-year-old Ishmael is diabetic and needs daily insulin injections to keep his blood sugar levels stable. After five years, the patient is a dab hand. For his nurse, however, it's all new. What do I do to your leg? Do I squeeze it? So if I just did that, and then I put it in, then I press it, then I wait for 10 seconds. Yeah, but I need to be a bit rigid in that. Okay. And there we go, well done, mate. You feel flustered, a bit of a sweat coming on, time slows down, so the 10 seconds of counting feels like eternity. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you count a little too slow? Was well, that a little slow? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I'll try and speed up my counting next time. There is a sense of achievement in doing something you've never done before. Every day when I'm on this place, my different my responsibility is growing. Um, just because of how much I get to do for a patient, I'm just using this time to form the best habits possible um, and learn as much as I can. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot to take in. So I hope I've got a good memory. <laughs> After a full shift on the ward, 
TK still has to hit the books at home. Right now, revising is one of the last things I'd, I'd choose to do, uh, definitely because of how tired I am. Um, but with deadlines creeping up on you, what I've just learned is that you've got to get on with things now. Three weeks later, TK aces the first of his year two exams, scoring 84%. Over the next 18 months, he'll have three more placements and five more assignments and exams. At this very minute, I can't see the finish line. There's plenty of things I've got to do in between. You have to go through checkpoints. If you don't make the checkpoint, you don't get to finish the race. So uh, for me, I look at the next two or three checkpoints at any given time, and I keep thinking, right, let's just make sure um, I've got the best lap time. <laughs> next time. Which arm are we doing? Blood. I'm not going to lie, I did feel a bit woozy. Blisters. I hope it's not like a yellowy, cheesy kind of substance. <laughs> and goodbyes. You look after yourself, all right. <laughs>